Ah yes, the classic trope. A character walks into a room, senses danger, and mutters those famous words, I can smell fear. Cue the laughter. Because obviously that's just macho nonsense, right? You can't smell emotions, right? Oh wait. Strap in and prepare your olfactory receptors, because today we're sticking our noses into the myth that fear has a scent. And the results are surprisingly aromatic. Let's start with the myth. People have long scoffed at the idea that humans can smell emotions. That kind of thing is reserved for dogs, or maybe your clingy cat who just knows when you're sad and decides to sit on your laptop. But human noses? Come on, we can barely smell that our milk's gone bad until it's threatening to leave the fridge on its own. So surely the idea that we detect emotions, especially fear through smell, is as fake as a reality show plotline. Except it's not. Science, in its relentless pursuit of making us look dumb forever doubting it, went ahead and proved that you can, in fact, smell fear. Not metaphorically, literally. And not just with a vague sense of something's off, but with your brain lighting up like a Vegas slot machine. Here's how the geniuses at Stony Brook University and other prestigious Brainiac hubs figured it out. They rounded up people about to do something terrifying, not filing taxes, but skydiving for the first time. You know, just your casual plunge from 13,000 feet into the void kind of stressor. These brave souls had sweat pads taped to their pits to collect the sweet, sweet nectar of sheer terror for science. On another day, the same people went for a jog on a treadmill. Not exactly the same adrenaline rush unless you're being chased by a bear, but good enough for a not freaking out baseline. Their sweat was collected again. Then, in an act of scientific genius, mild sadism, a different group of participants, completely unaware of what they were sniffing, got a nice whiff of both types of sweat while their brains were being scanned in an fMRI. What happened next? Their amygdala, the part of the brain that goes, Danger Will Robinson, lit up only when exposed to the stress sweat. Not treadmill sweat, not regular sweat. Just the OD existential dread. And no, they couldn't consciously tell the difference between the two sweats. They weren't gagging or recoiling, on a smell scale, both samples were rated equally meh. But deep in the subconscious abyss of the human mind, something was very, very alert. Not only did the brain react, but behavior changed too. When smelling stress sweat, participants were significantly better at identifying threatening facial expressions. Like suddenly your Sherlock Holmes of subtle scowls. All thanks to some scared skydiver's armpit juice. That's chemosensory communication, baby. But wait, it gets weirder. When autistic individuals were exposed to the same fear sweat, their brain response was different, sometimes even reversed. This suggests that our brain's ability to unconsciously process emotional signals through smell might vary, possibly offering insight into sensory processing differences. So yes, humans might not have pheromones in the traditional animal kingdom way, sorry perfume industry, but we absolutely have chemo signals that can affect mood, perception, and maybe even behavior. The scent of stress can make us more vigilant, which makes sense. If your buddy's freaking out, you probably should too. Evolution is a team sport after all. What's the takeaway here? Next time someone says, I smell fear, maybe they're not being dramatic. Maybe they just have a very active amygdala. If you're in a high stress job, like a firefighter, soldier, or just a kindergarten teacher during glitter hour, understanding these unconscious stress signals might help teams react faster and support each other more effectively. Who knew sniffing your coworker could be a team building exercise? Anyway, the myth that humans can't smell fear, it stinks. Because not only can we smell it, but it messes with our brains in ways that are both cool and kind of terrifying, which appropriately brings us full circle. So if you enjoyed this smelly deep dive into the world of unconscious communication, hit that like button with the force of a cortisol spike, subscribe to the debunkers, and comment below if you've ever felt someone's fear or just sweated profusely in an elevator. Go on, don't be shy, we're all mammals here. Until next time, 